The Doom franchise has seen its ups and downs. An effective inventor of more modern understandings of first-person shooters, games of the genre back in the 90s were often dubbed Doom-likes in their existence. And Doom 2 further cemented the series' place as the backbone of FPSs. Doom 3 was a video game, and then we had the rebirth in 2016 with the series reimagining, dubbed simply Doom, henceforth being referred to as Doom 2016. An instant hit with old-school fans and the new generation alike Doom 2016's simple, satisfying combat paired with modern innovations and appearances, there was no question the series had risen from its grave. And around four years later, the long-awaited sequel Doom Eternal hit digital shelves amid a pandemic. That was about a year ago from now, if you're wondering. Critical and fan response to Doom Eternal was exceedingly positive, and I can very much understand where everyone is coming from. However, I don't really like Doom Eternal. I think it's a fine enough game, but if given the choice between playing 2016 or Eternal, I'd pick the former every time. And here's why. Full disclosure, I've reviewed Eternal in the past, so if you'd like to watch that video first to get a rundown of the basics of Doom-style games, that's linked above and below. I'll be treading on some of the same ground in this video, so as such, I'll try to keep the basics brief. Both 2016 and Eternal scenarios are straightforward enough. You play as a generico dude with many guns and more anger still, blasting your way through complexes full of demons from hell itself. Upon dealing enough damage to demons, they'll glow blue or orange, indicating they can be glory killed. This is done by melee bashing the enemy to deal a lethal blow, with the animation modified by the enemy type, what angle you're approaching from, and the terrain upon which you're bashing. I'm not personally a fan of glory kills, at least not the frequency of which they're expected of you. To me, it feels like enemies simply have a bit too much health, and the glory kills lose their cool factor once you've seen the same animations play over and over again. Eternal adds some more variety, but in my opinion, I'd much prefer simply killing enemies with my plethora of firearms. Speaking of, Doom 2016's roster of weaponry is mostly maintained in Eternal, with some new ones to boot, but missing is the infinite ammo pistol used as a last resort when your supplies run dry. In lieu of this, the chainsaw, when used on foes in Doom Eternal, will spawn copious pools of ammo in a rainbow spray. Frankly though, this system feels excessive. In 2016, the chainsaw was simply a get-out-of-fight-free card. Depending on your fuel levels, you could use it to chop down all but bosses to bypass combat with them altogether. Useful for when you're low on health or supplies. In Eternal, the chainsaw with its slowly regenerating gasoline sees more use to supplement an artificial lack of ammo. Weapons ammo supplies are noticeably lower in Eternal, and drops seem fewer and farther between. This effectively forces you to chop up a lightweight enemy every once in a while, and to compensate for this, basic enemies seem to infinitely spawn in areas you've long since cleared to serve as ammo caches. The gameplay loop of ranged combat to chainsaw to ranged combat isn't necessarily bad, but it feels more railroaded than 2016's freeform fights. The chainsaw feels necessary rather than being a fun option. Eternal does offer more in the way of alternative arsenal, however. Slowly regenerating grenades have returned, but in addition is an ice grenade, a flamethrower burst, an instant kill sword, and the blood punch. Grenades are self-explanatory, but do have the new feature of serving as a quick tool for dispatching caca demons, the floating meatball things, by popping a grenade into their open mouth to instantly leave them open for a glory kill. While intuitive enough, I found myself only ever using grenades or the combat shotgun sticky grenade to deal with these types of enemies. It's the most effective way after all, and with so many other foes to deal with at any given time, it would be a waste to do anything else. Moving on, the ice grenade freezes enemies and can be upgraded to leave foes more vulnerable to damage while stuck. Simple enough, it's basically an option to get yourself out of corners when pressured. Although needing to actively swap between grenades or ice grenades to use one another takes an extra second I often found myself without. The Flame Belch doesn't deal damage of any note, but will make any damage dealt to inflamed foes drop armor packs to further increase Doom Guy's survivability. However, upon hearing of these two mechanics, you may assume igniting a frozen enemy would shatter or melt them, but 
no, you're left with an enemy that's frozen and burning and taking no damage from either. But the Blood Punch can bash foes to bits. Every time you get a glory kill, your Blood Punch will charge, and when it's fully charged, striking enemies with melee will enact a powerful swing in a radius, dealing massive damage and knocking armor off of certain kinds of demons. I enjoy Blood Punch overall, however, in contrast, the normal melee attack does literally no damage. It slightly staggers enemies backwards, but unlike 2016, you can't resort to swinging away when pressured. What I'm trying to say is, the gameplay mechanics of Doom Eternal all feel as though they were developed independent of one another, with no consideration as to their interactions with one another. Freezing an enemy with an ice grenade and then lighting them on fire with your flamethrower leaves you with a burning icicle rather than melting them or dealing any damage. Being slowed down in certain levels drowned in pools of purple goo leaves you with no method of faster transit, despite the dash mechanic being introduced. Melee attacks can shatter walls of steel and send giant blocks flying, but deal literally no damage to enemies without being charged with glory kills. Combat is meant to be fast-paced and ongoing, but is constantly interrupted by tutorial pop-ups or cutscenes indicating where to go next, seeing as the level design is doing you no favors and making that clear. Platforming off the beaten path to find secret extra lives and collectibles is encouraged, yet invisible walls and kill triggers are placed in otherwise innocuous positions. Those last two connect to one another quite well, by the way, as plenty of times tutorials or cutscenes would pop up in the middle of platforming, and during the time the screen takes to fade back into gameplay, the game is still going, meaning you'll end up falling and dying or being blasted by enemies you're in the middle of dealing with. Now, to be clear, the tutorial pop-ups can be fully disabled, however, the cutscenes, while skippable, still activate without warning. And besides, the tutorials are very much a necessity for a first-time player, as all the varied and unrelated mechanics need quite the introduction to sink in. Giving the player more options for exploration and combat sounds good in theory, but in practice the game is weighed down by them. I mean, the number of abilities on the HUD bound to different keys across the keyboard? It's like playing an MMO with the marathon man pace of, well, Doom. Some mechanics are outright competing with each other in their intended purpose. The chainsaw and crucible, the sword that is, could absolutely have been combined together into one weapon bound to one key. They serve the same theoretical function of quickly eliminating a close range target to save on ammo. Having two instant kill melee weapons with different fuel sources is excessive and confused. There are new arc vials, summoner type enemies, who will spawn powered up versions of demons who maintain their power until the summoner is killed. However, there is also the buff totem, which will continuously spawn and power up demons until destroyed. Why are these two separate mechanics? The fact that the game has to clarify with a pop-up when there's a buff totem nearby goes to show how similar and thus unnecessary having both of these features is. And that's not even getting into the new Empowered Demons feature added after launch. This will randomly power up demons who have killed other players during their own campaigns and drop more supplies as a reward upon being defeated. While I don't hate this conceptually, the fact that it effectively randomly buffs enemies means any difficulty balance this feature could supply has gone out the window. Speaking of the campaign, as I mentioned, I don't much care for the story of the Doom games, so I enjoy the ability to skip cutscenes, which was quite lacking in 2016. I can just enjoy the ride without asking why. However, the plot of Eternal is far less secondary as compared to 2016's, meaning that while cutscenes can be skipped, it feels weird to do so? There was clearly some thought put into this narrative as much as I dislike it. But during the cutscenes I did watch, it's clear the Doom guy also doesn't care about the story. All around him there's this creepy messiification of him, which is really not pleasant to watch. It's not enjoyable nor interesting, just gross in my opinion. But aside from a handful of flashbacks with some real Game Awards deserving delivery, <sighs> Doom Guy is silent and uncaring throughout. My point being, more effort was put into the plot than 2016's vague hell energy bad romp, but between being skippable and the protagonist clearly not giving a shit, why even bother trying to make a narrative at all? It's fucking Doom, it doesn't need to be deep. It's all about the speed, the combat, the exploration, and finding secrets. 
The ideal balance for me would be 2016's simpler narrative, which also makes the protagonist's lack of care for the story itself more charming, but with the ability to skip cutscenes, so upon replaying levels, I can get to the meat of the matter, the gameplay. Speaking of, let's get back to that. The rune system makes a return from 2016, equipable unlocks which augment your abilities, such as more air control, faster glory kills, etc. There are also Praetor tokens, which augment your abilities, such as faster equipment cooldown, more quickly platforming, etc. There are also crystals, which increase your HP, ammo, and armor, and augment your abilities, such as faster flamethrower cooldown, more health on glory kills, etc. There are also weapon mods, which augment your abilities and have their own two currencies, which further- I Okay, this could have all been one fucking system. Combine together the crystals, weapon points, suit tokens, mastery tokens, runes, all of it. Combine it all into one system of currency to purchase upgrades, or at least a smaller number of fragmented systems like Dune 2016. The menu is confusing, unintuitive to navigate, and remembering what upgrades you've unlocked is tricky in a pinch, not to mention that spending Sentinel batteries, another fucking system of currency by the way, to unlock upgrades in your home base doesn't autosave the game, meaning if you wish to upgrade everything before taking a break so you can jump right back in next time, well, you can't. While on the subject, the Doom Fortress, a retreat to practice combat and unlock upgrades between some levels, is a giant main menu, with story beats spread around it simply for the sake of taking up more more time. Being able to look at your collectibles is cute, but the sheer amount of time traveling between rooms takes in this confusing layout is a mess. This game is a mess! Ugh. And I haven't even gotten to the glitches yet. No game is safe from bugs, of course, but Eternal, even nearly a year after launch, is still plagued with broken interactions, dysfunctional AI, and crashing. Enemies will instantly respawn upon dying, glory kills will send you flying through the floor. I wouldn't be complaining if it wasn't so genuinely distracting from otherwise satisfying combat. Now, on my points thus far, I'm sure a lot of people disagree with me, and that's your prerogative. It's not my place to discount your enjoyment of a game that I don't personally like. But, rather than back off, I'm gonna go a little harder into territory I know most people disagree with me about. The Marauder isn't a fun enemy to fight. This guy with a shield which can only be targeted at mid-range, and is immune to weapons like the BFG or Insta-Kill Sword, you know, the weapons you'd ideally want to save for powerhouses like this, rather than use on mooks, but anyways, the Marauder instantly shields itself upon incoming damage, except for right before its attack as its eyes glow green. In theory, this idea works well, especially during a mid-campaign boss battle which uses the same mechanic to great effect. In practice, however, every Marauder encounter is filled with backstepping, trying to maintain mid-range and waiting for him to stop using attacks he can't be shot during, and instead use the one attack during which he can be hurt. He can go for long stretches without giving you a window to attack, and it's seemingly random when he'll finally decide to be vulnerable. I don't understand why people praise this enemy. He's dropped in alongside waves of normal foes which rush you and interrupt your otherwise focused fight. The gameplay slows to a crawl every time the Marauder shows up. I found the famed Super Shotgun to be the most effective tool to deal with this foe, despite the new grappling hook to pull yourself towards enemies not serving much function here. Speaking of which, with all the secret hunting, exploration, and 3D platforming, why introduce a grappling hook if you can't use it to platform in more inventive ways? As is, it's simply a quick way to bring yourself into damaging range of enemies. More mechanics not meshing, so on, so on. Look, I'm being harsh. I personally think fairly so, but upon my second playthrough of Eternal for this video, I found myself barely caring as I played. I didn't care as much about the upgrades, the secrets, and the fast-paced combat as I did during my review. Some positives I mentioned back then still hold true, such as being able to dodge enemy projectiles with the dashing, the hidden trophies proving a fun prize, and again, the core combat itself. The combat which has all but entirely been passed down from 2016. So let's take a step back and compare all of this to Doom 2016. Combat-wise, the game doesn't have nearly as many features and fewer enemy types to boot. But what is there is much more focused. You enter a room full of enemies, use your plethora of weapons to fight back, and the better you do, the more powerful your weapons will be via unlocking upgrade points. Exploration will unlock secret collectibles, runes, and suit upgrades. Again, those last 
two should have been one and the same, but I digress. Those runes, by the way, will feature fun little challenge missions completely removed from Eternal to unlock said upgrade. Level design-wise, 2016 is missing quite the number of secrets and off-the-beaten-path collectibles Eternal has on offer, but they aren't gone by any means. In addition, the classic level rooms are a fun little change of pace. In terms of layout, 2016's maps are a bit all over the place, but overall shorter from level to level. So, I would get lost in both games, but not for nearly as long in 2016 as I sometimes could in Eternal. Both games are lacking a bit of direction to guide the player forward. Gameplay-wise, however, 2016 simply plays better faster, less downtime from tutorials and needless new mechanics. Going back to 2016, the two biggest things that I missed from Eternal were the dash, not even necessarily in the air, just dashing on the ground to dodge attacks, and enemy weak points. Doom 2016's mantra is, if it has a head, it's a weak point, but Eternal has specific parts of enemies, like rocket launchers or arm cannons, which can be targeted and destroyed to make the foe less dangerous. Using the sticky grenades to pop off the head cannons from Arachnatron or the scope on the battle rifle to destroy the shoulder launchers on Revenants, it's satisfying and intuitive, a step in the right direction. Still, at least the lack of weak points in 2016 lets you turn your brain off and go full running gun mode, which is also enjoyable when done well. Let's talk about something important. What is Doom supposed to be? Obviously, when developing a game, you can make it pretty much however you want. It's your product, or uh, it in Bethesda's in this case. But the name and ideas of Doom are assume a certain style of play. To me, Doom is fast-paced combat in a series of arenas connected by hallways with secrets off the beaten path. Demons and bloodshed, hell and brimstone, with a variety of firearms to spice up gameplay. Doom 2016 does all of this, in my opinion, brilliantly. On top of that, there are also unskippable cutscenes which disrupt the flow, which is a bit obnoxious. Eternal, on the other hand, does all of these things very well, but in addition, there's 3D platforming, various side-grade kits, specific enemy weaknesses, and a level of difficulty that expects you to use all these mechanics in tandem without actually offering any particularly fun methods to do so. It's the same game as 2016 with a bunch of needless add-ons, filling up the HUD and taking up development time. I'm not saying Eternal should have been exactly the same game as 2016, I'm saying that a handful of these mechanics should have been explored further, rather than barely touching on so many of them. Trim the excess. Combine together mechanics like the Crucible and Chainsaw, the endless currencies with which to upgrade. Improve upon the 3D platforming by making this super shock and grappling hook connect with these climbable walls and monkey bars. Reduce the size of the Doom Fortress to cut down on dead time. There are so many ways in which Doom Eternal could have been a direct upgrade to 2016, but instead it feels like the same game with tacked on bullshit. As a result, I prefer the simpler, clearer, more focused 2016 all the thrills without the frills. Now, I'm not going to be discussing content aside from the campaign, I think I've made my points clear enough. The multiplayer isn't my thing, but it's there for those who want it. And I won't be looking at the paid DLC, frankly because I can't currently afford to pay for it. Not that I'd really want to, but speaking of cost, this is where things get interesting. Between my review of Eternal and the video you're watching now, Doom Eternal has been added to Xbox Game Pass, a paid monthly service that lets you play a bunch of AAA games without buying them individually. So like, if you have Game Pass for one reason or another, Returnal is already in your library. All my gripes with this game are made to show how I see Doom 2016 as a superior product, but if both can be offered alongside hundreds of other games, played through in under a month, all for like 10 bucks, well then I guess you can play both. I don't like Doom Eternal, but I played it all the way through and I still had moments of enjoyment even if I'd rather have been playing 2016. But having new environments to explore and new mechanics, half-baked as I may feel they are to try, not having to pay 60 bucks for a mediocre, effectively content pack of Doom 2016, I guess it's not worth complaining. But here I am, complaining regardless. I guess I just don't like seeing a game I otherwise enjoy be weighed down by so many unexpected explored ideas. Doom Eternal tried to do too many things at once, and it breaks at the seams quite possibly as a result. Doom 2016 explored a select few ideas to further potential, and 
even the ones I don't care for, like glory kills, I'll gladly put up with because the gameplay itself is so satisfying. Quick, mostly uninterrupted, high-stakes combat. Let this be a lesson. On any project you're working on, be it, say, art, music, or of course a video game, try to explore the core ideas of your craft to reach new grounds, adding in things which do not mesh with the base you're working with, be it filters, instruments, or indeed game mechanics, will drag the entire project down with it. Thanks for watching, and take it easy.